In today's video, I'll show you how to use the seven best mosaic hand tools for beginners. We're gonna cut, score, grind, place, and pick. Sound good? Let's get to it. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name is Julie. And for over 20 years, I've owned a mosaic art and lifestyle studio here in Miami called Mosaic Madness. I make art for clients as well as teach students just like you how to create mosaics for your home, family, and friends. And on this channel, we discuss specific projects, tips, tricks, hand tools, power tools, adhesives, and materials, all to shorten your learning curve when it comes to creating mosaic art. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, please consider subscribing. So if you watch part one of this video, then you know why I picked these seven tools and why I think they're so important. I also give a list of honorable mentions, which I'm not gonna go over today. So I encourage you to go back and watch part one after you're done watching this, and I'll put a link in the description card. I'm gonna go down the list of hand tools in the same order that they appeared in part one. And my goal for today is to eliminate any fear or intimidation or uncertainty you may have in starting to use tools in your mosaic artwork. Could you get hurt? Sure. This is why it helps to see someone else demonstrate how to use the tool before you attempt to do it. What's my biggest piece of advice here? Always be aware of where your fingers are. And what's my second piece of advice? Never clean off your work surface with your bare hands. Those two things will take you very far in your mosaic endeavors. First up are the ceramic tile nippers and the compound tile nippers. Both basically do the same thing, but I'll go over a few of their differences. So with the ceramic tile nippers, you squeeze the handles to close the jaws onto whatever it is that you're cutting. When you go to use the ceramic tile nippers, you wanna put the curved area towards the center of your body. So if you're right-handed, the curved area is gonna to face to the left, and if you're left-handed, the curved area is gonna to face to your right. You can cut your tile pieces into a box on your table. I personally like to cut them into a towel, but for today's demonstration, I'll cut them right onto the table. Safety first, so I'll put on my protective eyewear. You always wanna make sure that when you put your tile nipper onto whatever it is that you're cutting, that part of it hangs off. So I'm not gonna put it on like this. I'm going to make sure that the jaws of the nippers hang off or trail off the edge of the tile. And then it's just a matter of squeezing the handles. What you wanna do is make sure that you catch whatever it is that you're cutting. Otherwise, if it falls on the floor, it could break. Put the nippers on the edge and you squeeze. The more you use the tile nippers, the better your cuts will get, the more comfortable you'll get with using them, and the more you can predict how they will cut. So the second tool is the compound nippers, and they basically work the same way as the ceramic tile nippers. The nice thing is they take less hand strength in order to cut whatever it is you're trying to cut. They have a big enough jaw that you can fit ceramic or porcelain in there, maybe even some stone. They work the same way in that you put them on, you let it trail off the end, and you cut, and it is so much easier to cut. Another nice thing about the compound tile nippers is that not only do they not take a lot of hand strength, but should you be in a long tiling session or a large project or simply just in the zone and you wanna keep going, the compound tile nippers will allow you to go for a long time without feeling tired. So if you're considering using ceramic, stone, or porcelain in your mosaics, you might want to consider the compound tile nippers. Up next are the wheeled glass nippers. They work similarly to the ceramic tile nippers and the compound tile nippers, but they are a little different and obviously they're made to cut glass, which includes stained glass, small tea, glass tile, glass beads, glass rods. 
uh, glass baubles, you name it. You're only limited by how big the wheel opening is. They work similarly in that they have handles and you squeeze the handles and whatever you have in between these wheels will be cut. These wheels are really cool because if you loosen them, you can turn the wheel just a little bit and literally you can use the entire edge of both of the wheels. These wheels can break, but with proper care, they will last you a long time. Knock on wood, I've never had to change out the wheels on my nippers. So they work similarly to the ceramic tile nippers. You put your tile in between the jaws. In this case, you don't have to have your nippers off the edge of the piece that you're cutting. You can place it wherever you like, put it on the tile, you squeeze and it breaks. And you can go really small if you want. So if you want to work with glass in your mosaics, you're probably gonna wanna pick up the next two tools. First up is the glass cutter. This is the Thomas grip. There's also the pistol grip and the pencil grip. And it's really a matter of personal preference. You fill the reservoir with cutting oil. You don't wanna fill it up all the way. It just needs a little bit. The tip has a wheel that is self oiling. So you just wanna make sure that you've got a little bit of oil in here because when this gets self-oiled, it glides across the surface of your glass. If you're able to get to a stained glass store, you might be able to try out the three different kinds of glass cutters to see what feels good to you. They come in all sorts of colors. Let me show you how to use it. So you wanna position your cutter at the end of your piece of glass and then you just glide it across. You push it across. And you can hear it score as you're running across. Another thing I like to do when cutting straight lines with the glass cutter is I have this really cool little ruler that has a non-skid backing to it. It's sort of like foamy and it just, it doesn't go anywhere. I've also seen them where they have cork on the back, but I like to uh, measure out, line up my piece of glass, and I will run the glass cutter along the edge of the ruler to get a straight line. The glass cutter works really well if you wanna cut straight lines, curved lines, you wanna break down larger pieces of glass or smaller pieces of glass. It's really quite helpful. I personally use a glass cutter to cut down the larger pieces of glass, and then I use the glass nippers to work on smaller pieces of glass. Personal preference. So the second tool that you would want to get if you get the glass cutter is the running pliers. And this is what's going to cut the score line that you just made. You're gonna want to center your score line with the line on the jaws of the running pliers. You center it, you squeeze, and it breaks. So the next tool is called a grinding stone. This is an inexpensive way to get rid of any jagged edges, sharp points, and it's comparable to a mechanical glass grinder. It works really well if you have larger pieces of glass as well as smaller pieces of glass. And you wanna, you wanna get it wet. It needs to be wet in order to work. So I've got a jagged piece of glass right here. And so you just go back and forth at different angles onto the stone. You can go back and forth. You can go just one direction. It doesn't matter. And I can run my finger across this and I know I'm not gonna get cut now. I can go over corners and it's just so smooth. Now, if you have a bigger piece of glass, you simply wet the stone before you start working and you pull it out of the water and you're just 
gonna go over it. You just go over your piece of glass with your spoon. The next tool is actually a set of tools and not only are they the unsung heroes in the studio, but they're also pretty inexpensive. And I would be speaking of the steel mosaic picks, also known as dental instruments. Although sets can vary, what you want to look for is a set that has a straight point, some curved points, a flat paddle looking end, as well as tweezers or pinchers. These tools are really helpful for digging out a piece that maybe you changed your mind about, or maybe a piece sunk down into the adhesive and it needs to be pulled back out, perhaps you tiled around a particular area and you need to place some pieces in the center of some other mosaic tiles that you've already put down. The last tool on this list is permanent markers. So important in the studio. I use them pretty much every day. Either I'm marking up a substrate or I'm marking up a sketch for a client or I'm marking up a piece of glass or tile for the grinder. I have a variety of colors in the studio at, at any point in time, depending on the item that I'm going to be marking up. Sometimes I don't grind all of the permanent marker off, let's say a piece of tile or a piece of glass. All I'll do is I can go over it with rubbing alcohol or if I'm gonna be grouting a piece, the grout will actually remove the permanent marker from these items. You don't wanna use permanent markers on porous surfaces. You wanna be careful with that because then literally they are permanent markers. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, if you'd like to check out part one where I discuss why I picked these seven tools and if you have any budget constraints, as well as the honorable mentions, you'll wanna click the link in the description card and that'll take you directly to it. And again, everything in this video is listed down below in the description with links. I encourage you to read up on these tools and really think about what direction do you want your artwork to go in? Do you wanna go the ceramic route? Do you wanna go the glass route? or do you wanna cover both? Uh, but really think about the direction of where you want to get started with your artwork. Question of the day. Do you have a favorite mosaic tool for beginners? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up as it really does help my channel. And subscribe if you haven't already. Ring the bell notification so you'd never miss a single upload. And let me know in the comments if there's something you'd like me to cover in a future video. I'll see you soon. Bye. For beginners. Whoops. <laughs> um, hello? Oh, I just got myself. Look at that. <laughs> Ow! Oh! That hurt. <laughs> These seven modes it up. Papa. Um, that was tough. Maybe, uh, given you? <laughs> Porcelain. Last time. This is gonna be the best one. The best one. That's okay, that's okay. I, uh,